Alright, side notes about Sen's Fortress, since we've got some time here before Andre. It is a fortress of traps, and there's going to be a lot of falling, and a lot of arrows and darts, and a lot of enemies around corners, and new enemies that we haven't seen yet doing attacks that we don't know anything about. We've got elevators that either go up too high or down too low or don't work the way they're supposed to. Just a lot of stuff in there that can kill you easily. So Sen's Fortress, even though it sounds like it's going to be a huge problem, is really not too bad if you know what you're doing. So hopefully me going through it will make your run easier. And here I'm just looking at the Rite of Kindling. It tells you a little bit about it, but Kindling is what makes your bonfire stronger. We've been doing that. We've been getting 10 flasks out of a normal bonfire instead of 5. So that basically every bonfire is like a firekeeper bonfire where you get 10 flasks by default. But with the Rite of Kindling, you can boost all bonfires up to 20. Now you get 20 flasks out of your bonfire, and you can really tell when you've kindled a bonfire and when you haven't, because the flame just increases so much. It's taller than my dude, and it's going to continue to get even taller with this kindling. It's just awesome. So now we have 20 flasks, which will make your run through Sen's Fortress easier, provided you don't fall to your death or something. In terms of enemies and stuff, you should be pretty much good to go because 20 flasks is more than what you should need for this area. Here's the Black Bow of Ferris, we picked that up in the forest in the last video, and I'm gonna equip some arrows or something so that um, I can have a bow and some arrows. You're also gonna wanna buy whatever arrows, upgrade whatever weapons, kindle, do whatever you need to do before Sen's Fortress, because there really isn't going to be a time in An Orlando when we get there for you to upgrade your stuff. There is a blacksmith there, but he can't ascend things like Andre can. So buy whatever arrows you need to buy, upgrade whatever weapons you need to upgrade, you know, just do that kind of stuff now. Prepare to not be back here for a while. You can come back at any time while you're in An Orlando. You just have to go to the start of An Orlando and back through Sen's Fortress and then all the way back here. So it's kind of a long run, but you can do it. So it's not like you'll never come back here. It's just that you're probably not going to want to do the run. So I'm just going to pop a few souls and upgrade the bow to plus five. And then I believe I go ahead and get poison arrows because poison arrows and poison knives can be pretty helpful against enemies that like to heal themselves or against enemies that just have a lot of health. Something that you can poison easily and then you can walk away for a little bit, come back, hit it a couple times, or just keep poisoning it until it dies. It's a good way to get rid of some enemies. So poison arrows are sold by the undead merchant female in the waterway, which is kind of a run from here, really any way you go, it's kind of the longest and furthest point away from here. So I'm going to go ahead and trim the video again to after I've bought my poison arrows and upgraded my bow to plus five. That way we can just get to the point where we're starting Sen's Fortress. So remember, Sen's Fortress is back here, where Siegmeier was sitting, and he didn't know how to get in, and we rang both Bells of Awakening, and so the gate opened up. There's a pressure plate here you want to go around, because that's going to shoot some darts at you, but you can use those darts to your advantage by backing up, stepping on it, and the snake guys will get hit by that. You can get hit by that too though, and that does pretty good damage against you, so you want to be careful. The snake guys have a lot of poise, and they do biting attacks and stuff. You can parry them, you can backstab them, and those are probably the best ways to kill them. You can attack them normally, but with their high poise, it's pretty hard to kill them with just a normal weapon. 
And so we want to run up the stairs here. There's an item in the corner in that room I missed. I'm just noticing that now. So these swinging axes here, it's nothing too hard. You just got to stand in between a couple of them. You can look down and see the gap between them and judge whether or not you have enough time to actually go through the axes or if you have to pause. It shouldn't be too difficult to see. I've also kind of got this down so we shouldn't really worry about falling or getting hit or anything like that. So for these, you have to stop in between. You don't really have to. I'm sure you could sprint. But I find it easier to stop there and then to go between these. Just go through like that. And the guy stepped on his own pressure plate and got killed by the darts, which is always a great thing. And so we get some large Titanite shards, which is really good for upgrading our weapons up to plus 10. And then if we want to go any higher than that, we've got to use chunks, but we can't do that until we get another Ember after an Orlando. And so when you run over here, you're going to see boulders. Of course, like any house of traps, you've got to have the Indiana Jones boulder thing going on. Because who doesn't like seeing enemies getting squashed by boulders? Now, the timing with this is just enough where you can see I didn't run in the first place, so I barely have enough time to actually make it back to my spot and not get smushed. So you want to duck into here, and then run up here. Now, when I was playing, I misjudged this guy. I tried to block an attack and didn't quite realize it was going to bleed me to death. I didn't think I was going to take that much damage, but I did. So let me cut it back here. And so anyway, after you kill him, you run into the room he was guarding. And in this chest, you should get the Ring of Steel Protection, which increases your defense. And I should mention specifically for physical attacks, like actual slashes with weapons, not defense in general versus all elements or bleeding or poison or whatever. You can see my defense goes up in every category by 50 points, which is pretty nice. A lot of people wear this ring for the extra defense because it's helpful versus those physical attacks. And most enemies are going to do a physical attack versus an elemental one. So it's kind of nice to have. So after you get that, you want to get off of this staircase, but not miss that spot like I did. It's fine, you just kind of have to make the run back up the stairs here. You don't really need the item, but I always like getting everything that I can in an area so that I have an option if I decide I want to use that. It's really up to you. You can see what I get from it, and it's kind of in your way anyway, so you might as well grab it. You want to get up here and then fall. And we pick up the Chattel, which is a curved sickle blade that can actually pierce shields. It's very handy against people, especially in PvP, that love to block. You can reach behind and attack them with it and go through their shield so that they have to do some rolling instead of actually blocking everything you do. Good for great shield people that you're fighting or heavy armor tank people. It doesn't tell you, it just says evade shield defense to sneak in damage, but that's what it does, is that basically it does shield piercing, so your hits will always do damage. And here we have Siegmeier again, sitting at the edge of this trench mm. here. Mm. Oh -ho. Ah, where did you come from? Splendid news, I tell you. <laughs> Ah, so you see my sight. Yes, indeed. I've run up against a wall, or a ball, to be precise. I'm afraid I'm a bit too tough. We love running those things. So here I sit, in quite a pickle, 
But who knows? Perhaps we'll have another development. <laughs> Perhaps I could try some rolling. Bah, let go. My head is clear. Hmm. Perhaps I could bah later. Hmm. So basically, he's just saying, hey, that gate opened up by itself and I made it in here. That's really awesome. He doesn't know that it was you, but he knows that the gate opened up and that he could walk in here. And then he's like, but I can't make it past these boulders. I'm too fat to be able to do that. You need to be in good shape to time those perfectly, and I'm not. So he's just sitting there waiting for something to happen, basically. He's trying to think of a way to get past it, but is pretty much sitting there until something happens. That's what he means at the end there, where he's like, oh, hopefully something else will happen that I didn't foresee. So, anyway. We gotta fight this snake guy, and we're gonna be going in a lot of circles around here to get everything. Which isn't really a bad deal, because it's not too hard to get back to where we are. It's just that um, you're really not supposed to be able to outrun these boulders. You can make the timing just barely sometimes, but if you go up to the top of these stairs and fall like this, then you can hit this Cobra guy to begin with, which helps out a lot. And we will go through this broken wall later, but don't go there now because there's pretty much no way out once you go down there. You'd be better just to homeward bone out, but you don't want to have to run through everything we just ran through to get back here. So instead, we're going to go over here, and we'll pick up the black sorcerer armor and a sorcery called Hush, which makes you silent to um, enemies so that you can sneak up behind them better. And the black sorcery armor, to my knowledge, doesn't really have any different stats than the normal one. It's just a different color, which is all right. I thought that was kind of cool to be able to choose. Of course, most people choose the black armor because it's just cooler looking. Now, this elevator, you can see there, it made it up to our spot and then went up even higher. Because further up, there's spikes. And that's why there's blood on this elevator. So you kind of have to time this if you're going to go down it. You kind of have to time it so that you fall and hopefully catch it before it reaches the bottom. Otherwise, you might fall to death. But you should make it. You just have to time it right. If you go too early and fall down the hole, well, you're dead. And this right here, even though it looks like a chest, is not a chest. If you look at the chain, you can see that it's kind of sickle-shaped. That's different than the other chests, if you've looked at their chains, those are more round. They're almost like a perfect circle. And if you look closely, you can actually see that this chest moves. Let's see if I can get a... You can see it opens up there, and then closes. It's very subtle, and you're supposed to mistake it for a chest, but it's actually an enemy. And if you have a Lloyd's Talisman, which it doesn't ever say that it does this to this enemy, but it does, you throw it and the enemy will open up. This is a Mimic. And you can grab the item that the Mimic is guarding without getting attacked. You can do that with any Mimic at all times and then it'll close and whatever. You can also just attack the Mimic and it's got a slow wake up time so you can really damage it and then it's about worrying about these jump attacks some grab attacks and some kick attacks and those hand slashes really aren't the problem but these grab attacks that it'll want to do here in a second if it grabs you and bites down on you like that that's a grab attack that can kill you in one go so can opening it up without um, checking to see if it's a mimic if you just open the chest normally it'll grab you and eat you and you'll probably die the first time so anyway if you kill the mimic you also get your item but not if you've used the Lloyd's talisman so now we're gonna do something we're gonna wait right here wait for the boulders to come down and make a stack you can see there's one there we want this hole to fill up all the way to the top 
and then we want a boulder to roll over the stack and break the wall behind it. Now we should be able to climb up here and we can run over this stack and I would wait one more time for another boulder to pass just to be safe and then you can run over to this corner here and grab the covetous gold serpent ring which is actually one of the best rings in the game just because it boosts your item discovery by 200 points which is a lot, considering that you start with 100, and if you pop one humanity, you go to 150. Wearing this ring alone allows your item discovery to go up by 200 points, and so if you have 10 humanity and wear this ring, you have the max item discovery, which is really great, because that just means that anytime you've tried to get something that hasn't been dropping, you can put on this ring and your chances will be a lot higher just from wearing the ring. It, in fact, almost adds up to the total, like, if you had 10 humanity, the ring itself actually almost does as much as 10 humanity does, which is crazy. So I go from 150 to 350 if I wear it. There's also a silver version, which we're not going to get anytime soon but that increases the amount of souls you get from defeating enemies and that does apply to bosses as well so if you put that on while you're fighting a boss and you kill it you should get more souls it, I think it's 20% more so on a boss that might give you 60,000 souls you're gonna get 72,000 which is pretty awesome so next we're going to make the boulder contraption push the boulder this way which you do that by pushing the lever like I just did. There's actually a snake guy down there who's kind of resting against the wall that these boulders are breaking and it's also crushing him which is really awesome because you don't want to fight him. Might as well not fight him if the boulder trap's going to do it for you. You can redirect the boulders any way you want, it shouldn't turn around and do anything to you. Just don't direct it down this path obviously because you don't want to be standing in the way and get crushed. And so in here, behind a hidden wall that the boulders have to break, you run into Big Hat Logan, which the sorcerer guy was talking about. This place is a lovely mind. You like to do this with So, cool thing about Big Hat Logan is so we have his apprentice, the sorcerer Griggs of Vinheim. He teaches you basic sorceries and, you know, just the stuff to get your foot in the door as a sorcerer. If you go to Logan, which you have to free him, and then he'll move to Firelink Shrine, and he tells you that, he will teach you Tier 2 sorceries, I would like to call them. And those are more advanced, they require higher amounts of intelligence, so you might need 40 intelligence to use one of his spells, but that 40 intelligence will be well rewarded with a high damaging spell, or a spell that is just better than the normal version in such a great way that it's worth the cost and investment. And there's also a tier 2 pyromancer and a tier 2 cleric to go on to that. So really all magic is even in the end. Of course you can find miracles and pyromancies and spells off by themselves so you can't learn everything from these people. There are lost sorceries and pyromancies and miracles that you have to go pick up like the Tranquil Walk of Peace that we picked up in the catacombs. But, um, yeah, it's cool to know that you've basically gotten to the point where sorcery is going to be a lot more effective. And so after you do the boulder trick, 
you want to step on the pressure plate here and make the five arrows shoot out three times like that and then you should be able to continue into this hallway there shouldn't be anything else in your way for now until you get to this point here and these blades are dodged by sprinting through and missing all of them at once so try to find a good angle so that you can see there's really no space to stand between them sometimes you can scoot out like this and point your camera down but for these you need to just sprint on through when you get the biggest gap and so I would hold your sprint button you might do a back step like that but hold sprint and then sprint through and you should be fine if you try to pause anywhere between those blades you're gonna get hit so now we're in an area where there's this snake guy and there's a cobra version up the stairs there which he hasn't started attacking I think usually he tries to use lightning to attack so he's up there, but there's also one around this corner back here guarding some large titanite shards, I think. So we want to fight him too. Large titanite shards times two. And then we want to go up the stairs where the cobra is and take him out. Remember, he does bleeding. And he casts lightning, so we gotta be careful of that. You don't wanna die all of a sudden up here. Like, this attack is his super wind up bleed attack that killed me last time. I killed him first. And you can pick up the Flamberge, which is a curved sword that does bleeding. I'm not gonna show it right now, but it's there. You can pick him up from that enemy. So now here's a case where you might wanna use your bow. I'm using large arrows and a plus 5 upgraded bow. I'm not really doing that much damage, but I only have like 22 dexterity or whatever. And this bow would be better, obviously, with the higher dexterity that you have. So if you have like 30 or 40 for some reason, this bow should be doing more damage. And if that's not working for you, you can always try casting your spells if you have any, like sorcery or miracles if you have any projectile miracles or if you have like fireball like I do with pyromancy and sometimes you might have to switch it into your other hand that way you can make it because in my left hand I was hitting the door frame but in my right hand I made the throw just fine now you just gotta worry about the range a little bit but we managed to get them anyway so now you can switch it back or whatever the bow will work I just didn't want to waste so much time shooting arrows you could also try to poison him and wait that out but that's an even longer process so with this trap it's kind of the same thing you sprint through these two but stop and then sprint through these two and to the left you have a pressure plate that shoots some arrows and to the right you also have a pressure plate that shoots arrows so it doesn't really matter which one you step on, they're both going to go off. If you go left, it'll go off. If you go right, it'll go off. And they will both shoot the arrows, so just be careful not to get shot in the back, because we are really close to a bonfire. We have a checkpoint coming right up. In fact, we're going to go to it now. And so here you have to be careful of one enemy. He throws giant fire bombs that ignites the whole area. Let's see if I can see him here. That guy up there, he throws fire bombs. They crash and explode and light that whole area on fire. And that will kill you. Not in the first round, but you will take damage over time. That should be enough to kill you. So be careful. But this bonfire is kind of hidden. You gotta make this weird fall, which I didn't even know this bonfire existed when I played the first time. A friend had to tell me about it and kind of show me that there was a bonfire here because it's really hidden. So I'm going to go back to human and then I notice now that I have souls to probably level up but I don't for now. I just keep going. 
There's nothing that way, just don't worry about it. And where you end up falling is you end up falling on the double pressure plate that we just passed. So now we're back out here. And so this is a nice bonfire for running around up here because things have pretty much calmed down, but now you have to worry about environmental things like you run and jump and don't make the jump, you might fall to your death. If the firebomb gets you, you might fall to your death. In fact, we're going to be running up and killing the guy who's throwing the giant firebombs, and he himself can kill you. So it's just nice to have this bonfire up here. And I feel like it's one that a lot of people miss if there's not a message or something that tells them or a ghost of some other player going there. So, important to note, bonfire there. I picked up another balder shield and a flame stone plate ring, which you can kind of guess what that flame ring probably does. It just increases your fire defense. I forget exactly by how much, probably like 50 points or 100 points. So if you're battling anything fire, like Chaos Witch Quelag, then you can put on that ring and you'll take less damage from her fire. Her physical attacks will still do the same, but then you can wear the steel protection ring and negate some of that too. So the trick with the firebomb guy is he's so slow prepping his firebomb and throwing it where he wants to throw it that you can pretty much run through the area where he's going to plan to throw it before he even gets it thrown. So as long as you keep moving, you should be able to make it past all his stuff. Like up here, if you keep running, you can actually make it. For whatever reason, I paused. I waited for him to not throw another one. I guess I felt like maybe I was timing it wrong, but looking back at it, no, I totally could have made this. So, what I would do now, if you pause, is wait for him to throw a firebomb. He's gonna throw it right there. You can see the char marks where he's been throwing firebombs. And then you want to run and sprint. And as long as you sprint through here, you should make it just fine. Shouldn't really have to worry too much about that. And so, if we go up this tower here we end up back where he's throwing these firebombs. Now, with these giants, especially this one in particular, you kind of want to bait an attack and then back off. And if he does this weird Rambo charging attack, he has to take a breath for a good solid, like, 10 seconds, and you can really beat on him here and just do a lot of damage. he does it again so now I can hit him again you could also shoot arrows and poison him probably and then just wait for the poison to kill him or maybe have to re-poison him and then wait for that poison to kill him but in the end you kill him he doesn't come back you can destroy his fire bombs if you want they don't explode or anything but you can destroy them if you want and anywhere you see a giant, you can get to and you can kill it if you want. Like, there's one that's loading all the boulders into the boulder trap, but he does respawn. So there's really no point in going over there and messing with him. And so at this point, if you wanted to do the boss, you might have a couple of human phantoms there. Or if you don't and you just want a computer one anyway, you can go over to that separate side tower and there's Black Iron Tarkus which we're not going to summon for this fight, but you can if you want. And I just noticed that this person here has a mask on from Pinwheel, and this is when I realized that I didn't grab my Pinwheel mask, so you can either get the mask of the child, the mask of the mother, or the mask of the father, and I think child does stamina recovery, the mother does health, maximum health increase, and the father does equipment load, I think. But yeah, this is me scanning here, realizing I didn't grab it. So maybe in the next video, I can go down there and see if I have it. But anyway. So you can go do the boss right now, and you can complete Sen's Fortress if you want. You're really not in a bad spot, but you're missing out on a lot of things. Like, we haven't freed Logan. 
So we can't get access to his sorceries. And we have these cages here that are actually lifts. They're shortcuts to Andre. We need a key for that too. And there's one key that does all of that. It's called the cage key. And you get it in this tower. You have to jump across this broken bridge here. And you can jump off of this point here to the boulder guy and kill him if you want. You have to jump across there. And if you don't make it, you should live. Unless you just don't have a lot of health. But it's a good thing if you fall anyway because you can pick up a sniper crossbow and sniper bolts. Which are kind of misleading. It basically means that your crossbow has better range. So the bolt doesn't drop until it reaches a further distance. It doesn't mean you can lock on any further. It doesn't mean that it's got a scope or something you can look down. You still have to lock on to enemies to hit them. It just means that it might do more damage the further back you are or something like that. So if you miss the jump, you can pick those up. And so you want to try the jump again. It's kind of crappy. They could have made that like a foot closer and made it a little easier, but they didn't. And in this corner, we have a merchant. What? What? Who are you? Ah, another undead, eh? I took my son's fortress alone. But I'm, I'm different from those vile creatures. I was driven by conceit. Ah, you think you're different? That you can handle? Yes, I, I remember that feeling. For I was the same. So, let me help you out. With your soul searching. He sells black fire bombs and green blossoms. He sells large titanite shards and green ones in an infinite supply. He sells a great sword and great axe, which are unique weapons. He sells a tower shield. He sells feather arrows, which no merchant so far has sold. Basically, feather arrows have more range. If you shoot them, the arrow will take longer to drop the further distance. And since arrows and bows can be drawn and scoped so that you can shoot really long distances, feather arrows are great. And really, the main difference between the two is that Large does more damage closer, and Feather does more damage further away, like really far away, when most arrows wouldn't do any damage. Um, armor he sells is like the Katarina armor that Siegmeier is wearing, and his armor. And he also sells the Thunder and Magic Plate Rings, like the Fire one. They're just super expensive. We're both on the brink. And you can talk and to him, he doesn't say anything really new. He's just the crestfallen merchant. Don't even consider visiting Amorondo. Not in your state. For a century they've tried and failed. The Night King Rendor, Black Iron Targus, and even Logan himself. You won't stand a chance, you'll be eaten alive. But go along if you wish. If for me to deepen your despair. So, it's meant to sound intimidating that the Night King Rendell, which he owned the Steel Protection Ring, if you read the description for that, it says that he was known for being able to take a lot of blows and survive. Um, he died to the boss here. Uh, Black Iron Tarkus, which is the NPC phantom you can summon for the boss fight, died doing that. And Logan was defeated himself, but he was captured, I guess, instead of dying. And so, you're supposed to succeed where they failed. He says that you can't do it, not with the gear that you have. And he'll say that no matter what gear you have. You can be, like, way over-leveled and still be not strong enough to kill this boss. We're gonna kill it first try anyway. It's not a big deal. But down at the bottom of his tower is the cage key, so now we gotta head back to Logan, and we gotta head back to the lifts over here, which will take us down to Andre, sort of. It'll take us to, like, the first big room in Sen's Fortress. You'll see what I'm talking about, because I'll take it. Because you gotta open the cage, and then you've gotta ride one of the cages down to make the lift work. If you just open it and run away, then if you try to take the shortcut later, they'll still both be up here and you won't be able to use it. Riding it down takes you down here. Which you might be a little confused at first, but this is the first room with the swinging axes.
And there's still a lot of this place to explore. Well, maybe not a lot, but there's a whole portion of this area that you don't even think about yet, I'm sure. So remember the trick for these is to go between these two blades, these blades, and then run through those two. And there's our snake friend. We can kill him and go through the broken wall right now. I'm not going to. I'm going to instead push the ball contraption, the ball trap, to kill this snake guy for us. Or at least wound him a lot so we don't have to worry about it. And I guess the ball trap is not going this way. It should want to auto turn, but it's not going this way for whatever reason, so that's good. Killed this snake guy. And you can hear it turning. You can hear the ball trap wanting to just spin the trap lever this way. But remember, we go up the stairs and then we plunge down and kill this guy. You run through this door up these stairs. This is where the black sorcerer armor was. And you can run down these stairs here and then back up these and push the ball trap. We don't want to push it this way. I don't know why I pushed it this way. We want to push it down this way. I guess I pushed it away to make sure it wouldn't come kill me and then I thought, hey, you know what? Let's push it this way so that it kills the lizard guy for us. So we'll push the trap this way, and that should move the boulder that way now. And you should see some numbers on your screen. There we go, 152. The snake guy's got a lot of health. He's got to get hit with, like, three of these to die. Or, like, four of them to die and three to critically wound him or something. But, basically, just let the boulder go down. And then we can push it any way but that direction so now we should be able to run down here and we weren't able to just run up these stairs because there's a drop but he was so weak that one arrow killed him and now we can run over to Logan and free him oh heavens thank you and I have to resume my travels, but I must go a few things first, and I will be a favor. I will return to Farnick Shrine. Speak with me then, so that I may impart my sorcery. Oh, hello. Don't mind me. Go on ahead. I'll be here later. Oh, I'll be just fine, you Oh, hello. Alright, so he'll be back at Firelink Shrine now. And it's very important with every NPC that we meet, you want to loop their dialogue. Because if you don't, they stand there waiting for you to ask them their last thing. It's kind of weird, but if you just talk to them a couple times, they don't assume that they're free yet. You have to keep doing that until he has nothing more to say, and then he'll go back. That's just how Dark Souls works, so... If you're planning on playing the whole series and this is your first time through, get used to it because it happens in all three games. And so now, we're going to go up the stairs and drop again, but we're going to go into a side area to get another really cool ring and get some more stuff. So wait for a boulder. It's always the safest way. Run here, fall down, and now we're gonna go through this hole in the wall. We drop down here. You might have a snake guy that's up here. Sometimes they get knocked off by the axe traps, 
and then they end up here because their path takes them this way for whatever reason. And I've seen like two or three people here for no real reason other than they fell and somehow made it back here. So you might have a guy there. And you want to pick up the slumbering dragon crest ring, which makes you completely silent. It's like the sorcery hush that we picked up in here as well. It makes you completely silent, no matter how heavy your armor or whatever. And you won't make any noise, even trudging through water. So you can literally walk up or sprint up behind an enemy and backstab them. It's pretty cool. It's good for critical builds where people use like daggers and stuff and rely on the critical damage to kill enemies for them. And so now we're going to go into an area that's kind of a pain. You can die pretty easy if you're not careful. So since I have 20,000 souls, I'm going to put on a ring of sacrifice because you should have one ring of sacrifice if you've been following along. And what that does is if you die, you get to keep all your souls and your humanity and everything, but the ring will break. So you only get to use it once, so try not to die. And if you do die, try only to die once. And also when we get down here, you might want to be as light armored as you possibly can be. See, I'm light rolling now with a helmet because down here is a sludge area. It's not swamp, but you can sink into it nonetheless. It's like tar or whatever. So you want to wear the rusted iron ring so you don't slow down. And we got another one of these guys, which I'm going to completely avoid at this point. I'm not going to worry about fighting him. I'm just going to try and get him not to attack me when I'm super vulnerable. You can pick up a scythe. There's that jump attack that always screws you over if you're in a weird spot like I was. So all I'm really trying to do now is just back up so I'm kind of out of his range. Watch out for his lightning, but he's pretty slow. He shouldn't catch up anytime soon. That's not the real concern. The real concern is when you turn around, you've got these lightning cobra guys, and then you've got another one back here. And if you've got an enemy that got knocked off or whatever into the sludge, they climb this ladder to get out. And I've had them be climbing up this ladder before and kick me down. And I've died from that. But if you can make it past all that, you pick up a large soul of a proud knight. Which is a few thousand souls there. And you can put on the rings that you had before. Like, I had Havel's ring and I had the Chloranthi ring. So I'm going to put on that stuff. Actually, you might want to keep the Ring of Sacrifice on. Because the next enemy that we're going to fight is another one of those giants. Except we don't have the security of a doorway that he can't fit through to guard us this time. He's just going to be out in the open. You don't have to kill him. But he's up here. I wanted to show you that he's up here. Because he's the one that actually opens the Sen's Fortress Gate. And so he's doing the Rage Stomp thing again. So we can run up and really punish him for that. So use whatever you can do to do the most damage per second. If it's a spell, use a spell. If it's two-handing your weapon, two-hand. And I got lucky again where he's just doing these Rage Attacks. You just gotta remember to back up a lot, because if you don't, that can kill you in one go, too. And from him, you get a Titanite chunk, and there's really nothing else up here. Just him. So we can Homeward Bone back, and we'll be at the top of Sen's Fortress, because that's the only bonfire in here. And now we can level up. If you have to level up, I do. So I'm going to go ahead and level up health, just because you can't ever have too much health. And now we've only got one more area in Sen's Fortress full of stuff we haven't gotten yet that you probably want to get. Again, you don't have to, but now that we're back at a safe bonfire, 
and we're gonna be kind of near it. It shouldn't matter too much if we die. Plus, we spent the souls, and so everything should be fine. So this guy we've seen before. He was in Undead Parish guarding a Firekeeper soul in the very beginning. He was probably in the second or third video. And here he is again. He's got more health. But pretty much same thing. Big heavy guy. He swings pretty slow and a lot of time to punish him. And I'm pretty sure he's guaranteed to drop a large Titanite Shard every time you kill him. I know that there's one later on that does. So you want to follow his path. And we're going to meet another guy in Elite Knight armor. And this is Prince Ricard. He's got a special rapier called Ricard's Rapier. And what makes it special is that it's got a really quick jab attack. Like a flurry jab. That. Which most rapiers don't have. And so if you put an element on that, like fire or lightning, you can really do some damage to people. It's a dexterity weapon, being a rapier. And yeah, so biggest thing is he can parry you and he can also damage you pretty quick. So you gotta be careful with that. But aside from that, he doesn't have a ton of health and he really likes to use his bow if you get backed up. So a lot of times he'll run away from you and then you can just stab him while he's drawing his bow like this. He'll try to roll away, but he leaves himself open a lot. He relies on his special double stab rapier, which you can usually parry. The rapier itself doesn't do too much damage, but you just gotta be careful. And so you get Ricard's rapier. And then we continue running up this tower here. And in this chest, we'll pick up a Divine Blessing, which will fully heal you and cure you of all status effects like bleeding and poison. And a rare Ring of Sacrifice, which when you die, it also, in addition to protecting all your souls and humanity, if you die from cursing, it'll nullify the curse for you. So you don't wake up with half health. And I've seen people in a very specific part of the game where you have to die to an enemy. That enemy can do curse damage. And I've seen people die from that, wake up, and then have half health and are kind of screwed because it sends you to a terrible spot. And there's really no easy way out and everything does tons of damage. So I've seen people get hurt there. And we'll cover that when we get there. That's not anytime soon either. But um, I want to mention that the rare Ring of Sacrifice can do that. And so don't use it up if you can help it. Because you might have a use for it later. So from here on, we just got to make it back to the boss fog. We've got everything in Sen's Fortress. This area was actually shorter than the catacombs. Just because you don't have to worry about divine weapons and skeletons and necromancers and a covenant that's in the side area and all of that fun stuff. If you can, you can try and kill the boulder guy there, but he he's just going to come back if he rests the bonfire, so it's not really worth it. So to get up the path here to the boss, you just got to go past the shortcut cages and then run across this narrow path. And we've got a crossbow guy. Kill him. He should be pretty easy. Basically, all archer-type characters are weaker than their sword counterparts. And if you want, if you think you're going to struggle with this fight, then you can run over here and summon Iron Tarkus. He's an NPC. You could summon another player. I do recommend you either use NPCs or do it by yourself for most of these, just because you're never going to learn if somebody else battles the boss for you. And so, over to the right... You've been able to look at him the whole time we've been running around here. That's the boss. And this is the Iron Golem. He always starts out with this shockwave attack. And it usually hits this debris in the middle here. So you should just wait for that to happen. And then you can run up and battle him. 
the trick to him really is he's got super high defense and he can grab you and throw you off the edge for this battle so try to get him into the center of this arena because the grab attack itself might take away half of your health but it shouldn't kill you and so if he's gonna grab you and throw you you want him to throw you in the middle of the arena you can also try to fight him near the edge and sometimes he does jumps backwards and stuff and he's been known to accidentally jump off the edge and kill himself but here's a grab attack he throws me and does just a little more than half my health so you're definitely gonna want to heal a pretty easy way to dodge his grab attack is to just run between his legs and roll away like as soon as you get between them you can watch me do it a couple times basically concentrate your swings on one leg until he does this dizzy stagger thing and then hit the other leg when he's like that and he'll fall over like this and you can just wail on him from here on out he'll get back up eventually but if you're doing enough damage I've seen people kill him right now but he's getting back up for us he almost went off the edge there and so I would lure him back more this way and again, focus on one leg. So if I'm going to focus on this leg, let me focus on that leg. Watch out for stomps. You should do two to three, so just be clear of that. Watch out for your grabbing attacks. And that was a jump backwards. Those are the types of moves where he can jump off the edge by accident. I'm attacking the other leg, but it really doesn't matter so long as you can try to get him to stagger. So we'll keep attacking this one. We'll hit this leg, now he's staggering some more, so go for the other leg. him a couple more times should fall over like that and then you can hit him some more and basically kill him and there you have it that's the iron golem he's a pretty cool boss fight and when you kill him you get the core of an iron golem which is basically his soul and 40,000 souls and to progress on, you can't go through that doorway there, so you got to examine this ring of light. And this is what gets us into an Orlando. And so, welcome to An Orlando. A very beautiful setting in this game. Probably one of the best sights in this game is this sunset over this giant city. So, this is the city for the gods, and so everything is huge. Stairs are bigger than you, columns are bigger than you. We're not going to explore all of that. You can't even get over there. Basically, this area is just this area we're running in and down to the giant cathedral on the opposite end. The enemies here are big, but you can run past them. First thing you want to do is find a bonfire, obviously, because we made it this far. So all you got to do to do that 
is just keep running this way and go left once you get here. And we have our bonfire, which has a fire keeper next to it. And so we can level up or whatever. We can talk to the fire keeper too. So I'll end up reinforcing my Estus flask, talking to her. And I'll show well, you how to do that. You are a rare visitor. Welcome to the lost city of Anolondo, chosen undead. If you seek Lord Gwyn's old key, exit here and head straight yonder. If you are the chosen one, a revelation shall visit thee. What follows thereafter depends upon you. Hmm. What is it? What am I? Well, I am the keeper of the bonfire. If not for me, what beacon would there be in this lost city? A gatekeeper and a guide. That is my calling. The bonfires attended by the keepers are special. They are linked to one another, and their flames never die. Yet never shall the keepers of these flames meet. If you require rest, now is the time. That is, after all, what the bonfire is for. If you require rest, that... And so with any firekeeper, if you have firekeeper souls, which we should have two, you can go to Reinforce Estus Flask, which makes your Estus Flask go from zero to plus one, and then plus one to plus two, and you can get it all the way up to plus five, I think, in one playthrough. So I'm going to spend my souls getting to Dexterity at 25 there. And since I'm only like 1,000 or 1,500 souls away, I'm going to pop another soul just so that I can level up again. 3,000 is just a little too much, but that's okay. And so now we're leveled up, we're ready to go. And I'm going to end the video here. Now, as always, I suggest you run around and search and discover things for yourself. You can run around and explore An Orlando. It's pretty awesome. It's pretty huge. There are lots of enemies and lots of items to get. And there's a pretty confusing path ahead as to how we're actually going to get to that giant cathedral there in the background. But, um, yeah, so kind of explore, see if you can figure things out on your own. If not, I'll be back with another video shortly. So thank you for watching, and I hope this helped.